Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Padilla in the Know. The lovely Gina Wade here. So excited to have you here. Thank Thanks you so much for joining me. us. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So we're it's gonna be great. We have so much good information to share with you guys, so we're super excited. Um, I know we have a lot to get to, so we'll just jump right in. Um, for those of you who don't know, Gina is an event planner and event producer here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. She has worked on everything you can possibly imagine, from huge corporate events to um, more curated branded events. She's done, I mean, everything. Like, if you've seen the product or heard of the party, Gina's had a hand in it. <laughs> so just to kind of help people know a little bit about what you've done and what you're currently working on, can you fill us in a little? Absolutely. So my company is called Gina Wade Creative. We've been around for 11 years. Um, very proud of that. Um, That's impressive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we worked really, really hard. So um, it was a great milestone to make. I've got an incredible team. And ultimately, I, I got started working in sales and marketing. But what I found was that I was oftentimes doing things that were a little bit different than some of my colleagues in the sense that I would utilize events to promote the brands that I was trying to sell and market. And I found that that was my favorite way to get these brands in front of clients and, and you know have them experience them so that led to me moving to Los Angeles and getting a job in the event world I worked at the Mondrian Hotel and opened up some other properties and then worked for a big excuse me worked for another event production company before starting my own company so, Amazing. yeah it's been good and we work with all kinds of clients to your point small beauty brands larger um, clients like Netflix and Hulu so it's it's been a really fun ride so awesome. do you have any fun projects coming up at the moment we do we have a lot we are actually um, my company is a little bit different we don't just produce events we also represent about 12 different venues throughout the oh, wow. Los Angeles area so we help them market themselves to event producers so one of our venues is actually working with a big digital brand a streaming service that is taking over one of our venues for a month and completely Fun. making an immersive experience so we're working on that that's coming up quick we're working with Givenchy Beauty we've got something coming up for Hulu we're working with a few other beauty brands so it's Right now, it's a little bit quiet after awards season, but my team and I are enjoying that before we hit the ground running. Again. I mean, take a breath because yeah. anyone who's ever worked <laughs> award season before knows that basically from New Year's Day until mm -hmm. the end of the Oscars and two days after the Oscars end, because there's wrap up press after, yeah. you don't sleep. No. No. There's no sleeping. So. There's one rule in my company, and that is we don't take vacations in February or January. Ooh, so, no. <laughs> yeah, that's. That's that. Well, as I mentioned, you ha you and your team have helped create so many different kinds of events for so many different sorts of clients. How do you work with a client to help them determine the right vibe and the right theme for their event? I mean, I think it's really about having a very transparent conversation and deciding, number one, what is the story that the brand is trying to tell? What are the elements of the brand that the client really wants to get out to their clientele? So, for example, if it's an organic baby line, you know, we're going to want to have elements in that party that, you know, highlight that. Um, and also, what's their end goal of their event? Is it to get more influencers there? Do they want more of a social media footprint? Is it press? Is it a consumer event? So we kind of take all of those elements and, and look at those things and say, okay, these are the best steps and these are the best ways to get to those goals. I think that's such an important point is to go in knowing what your end goal mm -hmm. is because maybe your end goal is to launch a new product and get people, get like, build awareness around that product. Mm -hmm. Or maybe your end goal is just to have a lot of really beautiful pictures on social media. I think being clear about that and mm -hmm. not just having an event for the sake of having an event, but not yeah. knowing why you're doing it, is you're not gonna get anything out of it. No, and also it's good for us too as a business because I oftentimes ask my clients, at the end of this, what would you, how would you define success? What would you determine that this was an, a, a, a successful event for you? And if they come back to me with ROI or this, that, and the other, sometimes if I think that their expectation is not aligned with reality, then it might make me pause and think, I don't want to be seen as an event producer that didn't produce a successful event. So if I don't think that these ideas, their budget, and their expectations are aligned, it's a good way for me to determine if I want to move forward with this client too. Yeah, totally. And I think as a business owner, it's important to take that into account Absolutely. because you can't be all things to all people. No. And sometimes being like, hey, you know what, this isn't the right fit, but maybe mm -hmm. it will be in six months or maybe mm -hmm. it will be in a year. And having a good relationship with someone and maybe not 
following through on a project is actually a better route. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Um, so the visuals are king in the age of Instagram, mm -hmm. and that is truly where we are. So how do you, what are some of the visual elements that you help your clients infuse their event with that really tell the guest of the event about their brand and about their branding? I think it goes back to, again, having that initial conversation about what is the brand and you know is the brand is is the biggest thing to the brand the logo color or is it the elements in the product that they're selling so we always try to incorporate those things in so for example if you have a brand and everything is red you know it's a holiday event and they're they're really pushing red lipstick let's say we want to then create a find a venue at, that funnels into that ambiance and also create an environment where you're seeing all these pops of red so that it comes back to what that brand is about. So no matter who's posting about it or who's writing it up or who's attending it, they're walking out with an understanding of what this is. So we try to focus on color, logo, brand assignments, and also lighting. Lighting is key. Lighting you know, is so important. It is, because <laughs> if you have beautiful things that you want people to experience or take photos of, and the lighting is bad or it doesn't it doesn't read in a photo then it was a waste of money and it doesn't make sense yeah totally. you know? and I think so much about it is creating a visual moment that's not only Instagrammable but it's also unforgettable for the guests who are there absolutely and are there any things that you make sure that you talk about with your clients to help sort of uncover what those moments are gonna be or is it Yes. I, I mean, the, the thing with what I do for a living is it's so, the success of my team and the success of the client comes so succinctly down to communication. You know what I mean? The best clients for us are the ones that are very, very clear in what they're trying to accomplish. Sometimes we get clients that want us to tell them how to get there, which I also really enjoy. But if there's a clear end game, that's very, very, very helpful. And I mean, nobody likes to talk about money, but money and budget is a big factor in that as well. If a client has a smaller budget, I am going to very much insist that they try to find a venue that has a look and feel of their brand because yeah. we don't have the budget to build it. And when you're trying to build things that have a good impact on a teeny tiny budget, it can come off looking cheap or it can come off looking not very well produced. And yeah. we want to avoid all those things. So yeah. there's little cheats like that, but I do think that you know, you really have to look at the budget and the timing. If somebody tells me they have an event in 10 days and they want all these custom signs and custom branding, we have to really think like, okay, well, then you need to approve these things in 24 hours so that we can get them printed and you have to be prepared to make, you know, pay rush fees. And so it's all about sort of what are you trying to accomplish and what can you afford? Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. I mean, I had an executive producer who always used to say, you can have it quick, excellent, or or fast mm -hmm. and you can have two of those three yeah so absolutely. you gotta pick <laughs> pick your yeah. battles and pick what you want 100 percent. so what are some tips that you can share to help create some of those instagrammable moments in your event so again i've, I've already said this but you know lighting lighting and color yeah. you know it's so important that things look vibrant in a photo and read really really well um i think sometimes people see these big beautiful things that they see on Instagram and they want to do like a carbon copy of that and I think that that's the wrong move. I think that ultimately it's really really important that you think about how things a look in real life because you want people to have you know a particular reaction to them when they walk into the door. It's sort of like one of those things. It can't just look good in real life and not look good in photos mm -hmm. but it also can't look good in photos and look bad in the event. Yeah. So it's finding the marriage between those two things so that everybody's getting something out of it. Yeah. You know? And, you know, one of the tricks that I love seeing at events that I go to and events that I've been to of yours is staging little moments yeah. throughout the event. Can you speak a little bit more about why that's important and then Absolutely. how you do that? Well, I'll talk about it first in the logistics of the event and then I'll Perfect. talk about it in the logistics of a brand. So in the logistics of an event, if you have 40 people coming and you have one moment for them. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a line, people are going to get frustrated, and then they're not really experiencing the event. And that's the thing. There's, it should be an experience. Going to an event or a party, whether it's a party in your home or a big corporate event or a Hollywood premiere, it should be an experience. You know, it, from the minute they walk into the door, from the time that they leave, they are under the umbrella of the experience that you are trying to create. So if everybody's in line or there's really cool activations, but you're like, Ugh, I'm not. I'm not going to wait in that. Or people are waiting in line and they're not experiencing the food, or they're not looking at the you know beautiful views of the venue that you picked, or whatever the case may be. 
that's sort of a fail. So I'd rather see four small vignettes than one big one, depending on the guest count and what your, what your impact is trying to be. Yeah. So to that point also, as far as the logistics of the brand, I think having a lot of different vignettes gives people the opportunity to produce more content mm -hmm. and also find more creative content and ways to you know express what they're what they're experiencing totally. so if you just have one thing for them to do and then they're just drinking and eating tray past hors d'oeuvres it's kind of like eh. yeah. and a lot of times people will just leave earlier this that and the other so you want to keep them engaged you want to keep them interested and you want to give them a lot of elements that they can turn into content. Totally, and I think from a brand perspective, it gives you a chance to highlight some different elements of your brand. 100%. So it's not just all this one thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just whatever the new product is right. or you know whatever that one note is, the big note that you're hitting. You can have different moments with different vignettes and different Absolutely. pieces. Absolutely. Yeah. And from a traffic perspective, it helps to have people moving you want and people going. Flowing and like, the event. Absolutely. Yeah. The event is almost like a living, breathing thing. You want people to enter and experience it and you want it to have a good flow. Yeah. Those are the types of logistics that I feel like my team helps our clients with a lot. Yeah. Because sometimes people say, I saw this on Instagram and this is our new brand campaign and it's it's all got its own, you know, value. Yeah. But putting all those things in a room with actual people you know, it's a different. Experience. It's a totally different thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've worked with a lot of clients where I'm like, yeah, we're not going to want to put the bar right at the door. <laughs> it's like, well, why? Well, you want people to go in the event. If they have right. to stop and get their drinks right as they enter, yeah. they won't proceed in. And you've yeah. got a bottleneck. And sometimes people just don't think about it in that way. And luckily, yeah. my team and I have done this a long time, so we can usually troubleshoot those things right off the bat. Well, and I also think another thing that maybe people don't realize is a lot of these influencers are expected to post a story mm -hmm. explaining the event mm -hmm. to their audience. So Absolutely. you're going, yes, and you're going as a guest, and that's really fun, and that's great, but there's an expectation that you're going to take that content that you're mm -hmm. experiencing, you're going to metabolize it into a story in your own voice that you're going to share with your community. So in order to do that effectively, you need to have the space to Absolutely. be able to take a lot of different pictures because mm -hmm. as we all know sometimes the first picture doesn't quite work out and you need you know one or two extra we like to have options a little backup a, little, a few options um so i think that's another important thing is just making sure that you're setting everyone up to succeed you're mm -hmm. setting the brand up to succeed you're setting the guest up to succeed and everybody looks good and and polished and i think too to add to that I think for people that are out there that are interested in getting into events or interested in career this field, I think that it's really important to ask questions. I think sometimes, and this isn't just with events, I think this was, is with any career, I think sometimes people get a little shell-shocked or a little nervous and they feel like, well, if I'm asking too many questions, it'll be annoying or it'll look like I don't know what I'm doing, and that is not the case. The more information you can extract from your client and get more of the elements that are important to them, or what's worked for them in the past, mm -hmm. what hasn't worked for events in the past. Yeah. Um, I think those are important things to set you up for success. Totally. You know? Yeah, I mean, I find for video, when we're working with a client, even if we've worked with that client 30 times, I always set a call up before mm -hmm. the video so that we can walk through everything together and I can make sure that we're capturing what they need captured in the way that they want it done because things change and when you're yeah. not in-house for a company you mm -hmm. don't necessarily know about those changes in real time mm -hmm. and it's the only way you're gonna find out about them absolutely I mean I'm not privy to PR meetings and branding mm -hmm. meetings for every single one of my clients all the time yeah. so we have a we have one big um, rule in my office and that is don't assume you know, anytime somebody on my team is like, well, I thought, or I, I figured, it's like, no, 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 we ask, we find out. Because again, we just don't have the luxury of knowing every bit of information in real time. So if we're wondering, is option A or option B better, it's so much easier just to ask. And not yeah. just throw out an email and wait for people to respond. Throw out the email. If they don't get back to you, you know, text them. Call them. Call yeah. clients and just say, hey, we're trying to put this together for you. We just needed a little bit of clarity here. You know, information is king when it comes to what I do. Yeah. And I I think a lot of other businesses too to your point yeah. you know no I mean for me it's critical Crucial. like it yeah you Absolutely. have to and you know I think from a brand perspective too you would rather have a relationship with someone who is willing to ask questions and wants to represent you in the best possible way 100%. and do it in a way that feels seamless absolutely yeah so a lot of people don't necessarily have a Hollywood sized budget mm -hmm. to throw in a beautiful event. <laughs> um, are there, what are some of your favorite cost effective tools that you use to make a big visual impact but maybe not break the bank? In, in somebody's home? In, yeah, like let's if, talk about uh, in someone's home in first. Someone's home. Yeah. So if you're throwing a party for yourself 
and you want to have these fun, impactful moments, um, I always say go monochromatic and try to find an inexpensive element that you can do a lot of. You know, just having one or two little balloons next to a wall is cute, but I mean, whatever. I, I think that you should just try to find something where you can get a ton of balloons. Fill the wall. You know, make the picture look seamless. There's nothing worse than having a backdrop that doesn't fit into the frame, so you're seeing like the hallway in the back, or you're mm -hmm. seeing the poles that it's being hung up on. So I always tell people, do something and do 20 of them. If you're going to do streamers, don't just do one little thing of streamers. Do a ton of streamers. Put it on a wall so that when it's in the frame, you can't even see the ends of it. Something like that is going to make a big impact, and it doesn't have to be super, you know, expensive. Um, it's better to have one moment like that for home entertaining than have a bunch of little things that look kind of half-assed. Half -assed. Yeah. I, mean, I hate to say yeah. that, but you know. <laughs> um, but another thing too is I always tell people, look around your home and see what's already there. If you have a beautiful mantelpiece, you know, do some decor on your mantelpiece and make that your moment. If yeah. your red door into your house and you have a beautiful porch, have that be your little photo moment. If you have a great seating vignette or you can move a few things around and put a cute, you know, again, um, floral piece on that or whatnot or a little personalized branded piece. Those are all things that, you know, people aren't in your house every single day. Yeah. So it's not like they're taking these pictures every single day. This is new content for them. Do little surprises. I mean, I've even done little logo clings. They cost nothing. You can take them to a printer, put them on the floor with a little arrow that says fun this way and people will do the little foot shot. There's easy oh, ways you fun. can do it. That's so cute. And also if you're planning an annual event, like you're somebody that does your birthday party every year, you know, invest in a really cool personalized sign or something and don't put your age on it and don't put anything that calculates it to that year. Yep. But it's something that you can reuse again and again and again. You can yeah. paint it different colors every year or something like that. So you can spend a little bit more money and then just keep it. Yeah. That's really smart. So, That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I love the I love the balloons too because I feel like they make such an impact. And I know for shooting, we're always looking for something that has a little bit of color, a mm -hmm. little bit of texture, but isn't going to overwhelm the frame. Right. And setting something off back in the distance, like balloons or streamers or even Christmas lights, is yeah. a great and expensive way to make that frame feel full. Absolutely. And you really want that kind of visual abundance because that 100%. photographs so well and it looks so good. And there's great places you know online to find oversized. If you're throwing an ice cream social, there's Yep. easy places to find big oversized ice cream cones or ice cream bars or you know find things like that so if you don't have the budget or an area that you can build those things have really fun cool props not just the props that everybody else has try yep. to think outside the box a little bit oversized is always great monochromatic is always great because it makes yep. this one big colorful impact yep. and utilize what you've got Totally. You know? Um, do some of those same tips also translate to brands? Like if some of our 100%. viewers watching are doing something maybe more like a brand initiative. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, again, it's great to go through the venue that you select and look at what is here. You know, if we just did an event not that long ago for a brand and, you know, smaller budget, but still a very colorful, lighthearted brand. So we found this venue that had this really cute kind of gazebo with all of this greenery. We made that our photo backdrop. We added this like big balloon sort of archway that kind of flowed up that was very contemporary mm -hmm. and cool and it didn't cost anything. Yeah. You know, so really to lean into what's there, I would say to brands and also like I said, you know, find these little impactful moments so that you can build off of, you know, things that you already have and, and just add a lot to it. Yeah. You know? I think that's such a great tip for a brand when you're looking at spaces and mm -hmm. you're walking around those spaces to make sure that there are things within that space that you aren't going to have to pay extra to Absolutely. take advantage of, you Absolutely. know, because if you're walking into a super clean slate, that's great if you have a huge budget and you can totally transform it. But if you're trying to keep costs down, you want a place that already has a little character and a little personality so that you can utilize that to your advantage. 100%. I mean, if your brand is very, you know, down and dirty, and warehousey, then a big empty warehouse might work. But it might not work if your event is 40 people because then yeah. it's going to feel empty. So again, it goes back to sort of looking really realistic at what your end game is, how many people you're going to have because you want the event to feel full. Whether no matter what the brand is, no matter what the vibe is, you want that event to feel full because when it feels full, it feels successful. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I know something that I talk about a lot with my clients is creating a visual signature. Mm -hmm. And I feel like finding ways to infuse that visual signature and really 
pull everything back to the visuals of your brand through little moments and colors and all of those things. It's so important because it really helps tell the story of your brand totally. and your products and what you're doing and what your mission is without having to say a word. Right. You know, the visuals are just so key. It's so true. And it's, and it's true outside of events even. I mean, when you think about your daily life, when you walk into the st a store to buy something, what catches your eye? The display, the visuals, how it's presented to you. I mean, at the end of the day, all these brands are trying to get people to be aware of their brand and buy their brand, yeah. buy into their messaging. So to your point, visual, visual concepts really do tell the story and it gets people excited. You know, if, if I am looking for a new lipstick and I find this lipstick that it's all about, it's really moisturizing, but it stays on all day. That's interesting to me. And if suddenly they're telling me, and you know, we've got 76 colors in our palette and mm -hmm. you can buy direct to consumer, these are all things that gauge my interest and make me potentially a consumer of that brand. Yeah. So you want to get all those elements out to the people that are coming to the event, because clearly if they're walking in the, do in the door, they're already interested. Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But now you want them to talk about it to their friends or talk yeah. about the event or, you know, talk about what they learned. And, and that sort of creates that messaging that goes on beyond the four walls of the event. Totally, totally. You know? And, you know, the way that they're going to share that and the way that they're going to do that mm -hmm. is through visuals and mm -hmm. impactful visuals, be it in photography or video or an event, are just absolutely critical 100%. to your brand. And well, that's why what success. you do is always so important what I do because you can take the visuals and put them in these beautiful video packages and then people outside of the event it's can, almost like they're experiencing it themselves. Totally. But if there's nothing to shoot, <laughs> right. then I'm standing there for no reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's good. It's good to have partners and right. teams. So last question for the day. Um, I, I think when we're looking around on social media and we're scrolling through Instagram, it's so easy to get caught up in these beautiful, over the top, just incredible events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many of them that we see pictures of, but sometimes that's not always possible. Right. Um, so, what are some of the things that you chat with with your clients to help? keep everything in line because at the end of the day if you're a business or if you're an individual you only have so much to spend mm -hmm. on the one event and you really want to make the most impact that you can so what are like some of the tips and tricks that you work with your clients to help them get what they want and achieve what they want but do it in a way that isn't going to bankrupt them <laughs> right right well again I think that going back to a point that we made earlier with these vignettes mm -hmm. I think it's really impactful for them to make sure that they have a customizable element to to their event. Yep. So for example, if you have a station that's like build your own flat lay, my flat lay is going to look different than your flat lay. Yep. So now suddenly not everybody's taking the same picture. So I think that it's good, no matter what your budget, to find a way that there's something experiential that people attending can really create their own content, kind of experience something that may be different than what everybody is doing. I love that. Make it their own, put it, put an individual spin on it, if you will. That's also going to maximize their content yeah. and maximize all the photos that are going to go out on social media or the press. Yeah. So I think those are good, good ideas to keep in mind. I also think that, you know, just being realistic about what things cost. I had a a meeting with a client not that long ago and he was like, I want to have a three day experiential and I was like, well, I hope you have a really big budget for that because here's what that's going to cost you. Three day long events are a lot more expensive than a two hour cocktail reception, yeah. which was what the conversation had initially started as. So again, you never want to feel like a naysayer to these people, but you also want to say, yeah, I saw the party that you're referencing on social media. That client probably spent XYZ. Mm -hmm. If you have XYZ, that's great. But even if you do have an XYZ budget, let's not do the same thing that this other brand did because yeah. people have seen it. It's been photographed, it's been done. So I think again, it's being very creative and staying on top of sort of what is their end game and how do we take what they have realistically and create these moments. And just because somebody else spent a million dollars on something doesn't mean that you necessarily have to. There are creative, fun ways that you can still do impactful things and have very happy clients and very happy guests. Totally, yeah, and I think not being afraid to think outside the box and 100%. not being afraid to try something out and you know let people infuse a little bit of their own creativity totally. into it because you're going to get something that you may have never even dreamed possible mm -hmm. and that's it's such a great way to get people engaged and involved but it also gets them excited to share it totally and i think if your client is really like digging their heels in like it's got to be this idea mm -hmm. so there's some arguments you're just never going to win so instead of being like, no, we shouldn't do that, that's the time to be like, I see why you like this. 
but maybe we make it more personal to your brand by just tweaking it a little bit. Yeah. Then they'll feel more collaborative yeah. and that you're appreciating their ideas, but you're also doing what's best for them by making it more of their own. Yeah. More totally. individualized, you know? Totally. I love that. Well, can you tell everyone where we can find you and follow Gina? Because you definitely want to see what she's up to. It's amazing. That's so nice. Um, so we are on Instagram at, at Gina Wade Creative. We have a great Facebook page. We do a lot of albums from all of our events there. That is facebook.com backslash Gina Wade Creative. Um, we're not really on Twitter because we're so much more of a visual media. Yeah. So the best places are really Instagram. And we're about to launch our new website, which is www.ginawadecreative.com. It's and that should be exciting. coming any week now. Ooh, good times. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And thank you. This thank was you super informative. It was so fun. And all right, we'll see you guys next week at 1230. Thanks so much.